This video is brought to you by the Curiosity Stream. Get your first 30 days of streaming completely free using the link curiositystream.com slash feature history. Or wait till the end to hear more. Hello and welcome to Feature History, featuring not history, but news. Because in this video I'm going to be covering the Kashmir Conflict. One of the world's current longest running conflicts. And the thing about long running conflicts is there's offered as much, if not more, history to it than there is current developments. So while this topic isn't very likely to come up in your schoolwork, it will come up on your telly. And you could argue that is a whole lot more important to know about. So in the interest of your foreign affairs trivia, join me as we metaphorically travel to the princely Himalayan state of Jammu and Kashmir. The Kashmir Valley should be known for its radiating beauty and jaw-dropping views. But instead, the area is most well known for its long history of violence that has run for over seven decades and stolen the lives of almost 60,000 people. Instead of hosting tourists, Kashmir has been hosting an endless conflict between India, Pakistan, its own people, and a little bit of China for extra spice. Now you could say the entire conflict is just border skirmish after border skirmish, battling for claim over Kashmir's natural resources and access to the vital Indus River. But you'd only be half right, because the other half of the story is a political and social one, and understanding the political and social history could take you back to the dawn of time. But for this video, it'll take us back to 1845. The British East India Company had been expanding its control over the Indian subcontinent for several hundred years at that point, and in the mid-19th century clashed with the Sikh Empire to the northwest. After their first war, the region of Kashmir was seized, and in 1858 would be incorporated with the rest of India into the British Raj. The British Raj then weathered until the end of the Second World War, where amongst many other changes to the British Empire, the subcontinent would be freed from the British administration. The Raj was split, partitioned along the religious divides of India. The subcontinent would have its bulk claimed by both the dominions of India and Pakistan. Between the two dominions were 650 princely states that could choose independence or join either dominion. Many states would join the dominions in accordance to their own religious demographics. Hindus and Sikhs to India, Muslims to Pakistan. If this sounds unorganized and very sudden, that's because it was. The partition of India was chaos, a million would die, and 15 million were displaced in a time of rampant atrocities and confusion. It was in this situation the state of Jammu and Kashmir remained independent. The state held a majority Muslim population, but with a sizable Sikh and Hindu minority and the Hindu Maharaja Hari Singh, it was decided the region would fall to neither dominion. However, the tribesmen of Pakistan viewed this as a blatant oppression of the wishes of the valley's Muslims and began to swarm the west of the state, quickly overpowering Hari Singh's tiny personal forces. By the 22nd of October 1947, the tribesmen had met the capital city of Shanaga, and Hari Singh fled to India to request military assistance. He would be made to sign the instrument of accession on the 27th, admitting Kashmir into the dominion of India, and in return, receiving the military defense of its army. Or rather, turning Kashmir into the new front line of a war between Pakistan and India. Pakistan claimed Kashmir on cultural grounds, India claimed it on legal. The British would take the view that the Pakistani militias needed to be repelled from Kashmir, and the question of Kashmir's nationality would be left to its people. But neither Pakistan or India planned on that. The Indo-Pakistani War lasted from 1947 to 1948, claiming thousands of lives. The war would come to a close entering 1949, with a UN ceasefire leaving a third of Kashmir in Pakistan's control and the rest under India. The condition was that Kashmir would soon receive its plebiscite to vote on which nation to join. India, however, holding a majority of the state, rebuked attempt after attempt for the Kashmiris to hold a true free plebiscite. Instead, India believed the state could just be split between the two nations. Pakistan refused. The plebiscite must be honored because, of course, they reckoned they'd win it. And so began a ruthless cycle of political headbutting, protests, human rights violations, oppression, 
and conflict. Over a decade had passed since the partition, but much of its consequences remained. A slow civilian war silently waged in Kashmir, most noticeable in India's administered region, but definitely present in Pakistan as well. In 1962, India would come under attack from the growing Maoist Chinese power, who decided to also throw their hat into Kashmir when they seized the mostly uninhabited region of Aksai Chin. Mostly as a middle finger for India's stance on Tibet, but that's getting into a whole other topic. Seeing weakness, Pakistan attempted to spark resistance in Indian administered Kashmir, leading to a second Indo Pakistani war. India quickly began to push Pakistan back before both the US and Soviet Union pressured them to reinforce the ceasefire line and end the war in only 17 days. In the wake of the 1965 war, Indian Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri and Pakistan's President Ayub Khan would sign the Tashkent Declaration. Both sides removed their forces from Kashmir in what seemed to finally be a true attempt to cooperate and end the tension in the state. However, the claims on Kashmir, its damage and its grievances all remained unresolved after the declaration. A third war was a matter of when, not if. And when was answered in 1971. In that year, East Pakistan was in extreme turmoil, faced with a conflict between independence fighters and the Pakistani military. India and Pakistan's already fragile relationship took a nosedive when India joined the war and supported the rebels. East Pakistan was replaced with the independent Bangladesh, and the two nations' bad blood got bad. Uh. Pakistan and India's rivalry was a constant cycle, blowing up into war, bombing each other to bits, intervention, peace talks, failure to deliver on their promises, and doing it all over again. It was tragically predictable. 1972 saw the Shimla Agreement made to reinforce the promises of the Tashkent Declaration, but just like the original treaty failed, this one did too. There was a generation of Kashmiris that had grown up only knowing this endless conflict. All they knew was the oppression, the harassment, the kidnappings, the torture, the executions. In 1987, Indian administered Kashmir was subject to a notoriously rigged election, and what little trust Kashmiris had in the Indian government was gone. Protests led to riots, and riots led to violence very quickly. Indian troops reinforced Kashmir to quell rebellion, and it wasn't pretty. After these events, the conflict in Kashmir was less between India and Pakistan, and more between security forces and insurgency. It was entering a new phase, a more violent, a more complicated, and a more ugly one. In 1989, the Muslim-majority Kashmir Valley was witness to a new insurgency against Indian administration. The insurgency lasted... well, it's still going today. Thousands have been killed as a result, and India's response to the insurgency has just consisted of ramping up security forces and cracking down on militants. Hundreds of cases of murders and brutality have been recorded, whilst thousands of people have just completely disappeared. Hundreds more are killed each year and human rights violations are aplenty. Kashmir has been militarized for several generations and any change does not seem to be coming. Whether security forces are encountering shootouts with militants or the weekly Sangbaz protests, it's too easy for the government to simply dismiss these as Pakistani-backed fronts for the overall border conflict. But an easy explanation often isn't the correct one. Skirmishes between the two powers are not a rare occurrence on the line of control. In 1999, both India and Pakistan, nuclear countries at that point, warred over the Kargil district. India won that fight, but certainly not the war. The closest thing to a resolution in recent memory was in 2004. Negotiations for demilitarization and peace were held for year after year, up until the Mumbai attacks in 2008. A Pakistani-backed terrorist cell shot and bombed one of India's most densely populated cities, killing 174 people and sending India and Pakistan's relations back to the 80s. Things have only continued to worsen in recent history. In 2016, the death of rebel commander and online viral success Burhan Wani led to some of the worst rioting in years. To this very day, both India and Pakistan assert their territorial claims over Kashmir, and skirmishes are all too common, one only happening several months before this video. 
The region of Kashmir is populated with many diverse cultures and religions and the prospect of India and Pakistan establishing peace in Kashmir is unlikely. But the prospect of a nuclear war between the two countries isn't very likely either. Instead, as it currently sits, it seems the cycle is only doomed to repeat again and again continuing to damage and worsen the lives of Kashmiris and their Kashmir. And so, the saying continues to ring true. Those that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And if you want to learn from history, look no further than Curiosity Stream. Over on their website is a series of documentaries on Asia's monarchies such as Nepal which sits very close to Kashmir and had its own conflict across the 90s and early 2000s. If that doesn't tickle your fancy, the Curiosity Stream has a lot more to pick from. In fact, over 2400 more to pick from. The documentaries cover history, science, nature, technology, society, and more, and you can check it all out using the link curiositystream.com slash feature history and get your first 30 days for free. So kill some time, take a look, and before you know it, something will pique your curiosity. I'd like to thank the patrons, the sponsor, and everyone for your patience with my videos lately. I've been working on and off on a big project I'd like to bring to the channel hopefully this year, and it's not strictly history related, so keep your eyes out for that at some point at some time. And until next time.